Okay, so next I want to talk about image dimensions. Uh, specifically width, but all the properties that I'm going to talk about in JavaScript work for both width and for height. So we've got an image element here, and source is set to nothing, so when I load it on the page right now, we're not getting anything. We're just getting the background color, some padding is actually in here, and a border on it. So here's our dimensions. We've got width set to 500, height to auto. Height to auto means that the aspect ratio is going to be maintained. We're not going to have a different height. It's not going to stretch or squash the image. It's going to maintain that aspect ratio. So this is something that you probably all want to do nearly all the time. If you don't specify height, then the default value for it is going to be auto. So it will do this if you do not specify a height property. As I was saying when I looked at the page, I've got padding set. So there's 20 pixels of padding on the top, bottom, right, and left. There's a background color so you can see where the padding is. There's a border, which is 5 pixels on each side. Now, if I take an image URL here and paste it in, I'm going to use the Pixum placeholder image service. There we go. And you can see this is the 20 pixels on all four sides and 5 pixels on the four sides for the border, the 20 for the padding, and there's my image being rendered at 500 pixels, 500 width, 500 height. And it's doing that because here I've specified I'm loading an image that is 400 pixels wide by 400 pixels high. So it's got a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. That's the ratio of the width to the height. And then in my CSS, I'm resizing it as 500 pixels. If I were to take this off, around the, all of this. If I come back and I refresh, there we go. You can see it loads as a smaller image. This is its normal size, its natural size right here, the 400. I'm going to keep my 500 because I want to show you all these different image properties. There it is. There's my image loaded, 500 pixels. All right, let's look at the script. I have a load listener here. The image element itself has the ID image, so I'm fetching that. I've got a listener for the load event, I've got a listener for the error event, and I've got a click listener on the H1 element. Each time I click on the H1, I'm going to be replacing this image source with a new one. I'm going to randomly generate one number between 100 and 500. That's my range. I'll write out what that number is, and then I'll use that number twice. So I get the same width and height each time I do it. So every time I click on the H1, and this is the script that's running right now, if I click on here, 220. So you can see the image is a little bit blurry here. That's because it was 220 and it's being stretched up to 500 pixels. My CSS is loading an image. Here we are, one that's 395, so it's much closer, so the image is a lot crisper. 444, again, that's a fairly good image. 202, that one's not as good quality. There's some artifacts here that we can see inside the image because it was smaller and stretched up to 500 pixels. All right, now the other properties that we have, the width property, which is what I'm writing out, that is, if you look in the comments here, 500, 500, 500. So every time we load an image, it's always saying the width is 500. And that is because that is the rendered width. It's also the rendered height. That's what's specified in the CSS. I'm always going to get this value. Or if I had specified here a width, I'm always going to get that number when I ask for the width property. There are, however, three other properties that you may want to use. Client width, offset width, and natural width. Client width is the rendered width plus the padding. So we have 20 pixels of padding on each side, so that's an additional 40. So if we were to write out here the client width, run this again, client width is 540. So it's the rendered plus an additional 40 pixels. If we do the offset width,
the offset width is the same as the client width, but additionally the padding is being added. So we've got an extra 10 pixels here, 5 pixels of padding on the right and 5 on the left. This extra dimension is being added on there. So we have these properties, width, client width, offset width, all using the rendered width, so whatever the CSS is saying, but then you have the option of bringing in the padding or the padding and the border. So sometimes these can be useful calculations for you. The other value which I find um, quite useful is the natural width. This one, so I come in here, there we go. Natural width is what is the original size of the image? So 540 is the client width, so that's the rendered plus the padding, rendered plus the padding and border. Natural width, well that was the original size. In the default, back in the HTML, we requested an image that was 400 by 400. So now if I click here, I'm going to be randomly picking a number, 342. There's my natural width. Click again, 432. That's the natural width. So the natural width is the original size. There's also a natural height, an offset height, a client height, and a height. But the natural one, that is the original size. So if you ever need to know what the original size of the image is, that's the property that you're looking for, not the width. Width is going to be affected by HTML attributes. It's going to be affected by CSS properties that you set. Natural width, that is the actual size of the image. That's going to give you a much better idea of the quality of the image before you render it or do anything else with it on your page. All right, so I hope that helps. Any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.